digital health was something that people were pretty skeptical about. And yet, when COVID-19 started, all of our health systems were unprepared for this kind of emergency. No one had access to the information they needed. They were completely surrounded by misinformation. In the coming days, we will announce a powerful new tool. It was a pivotal moment. It really changed the mindset amongst the decision makers and the stakeholders about what the value of digital health was. And it really accelerated our work. In sub-Saharan Africa, some people live up to three hours away from the nearest clinic. But today, with the penetration of smartphones increasing, we're able to distribute information very quickly. Access to mobile phones is providing personalized communication to people on a scale that nothing else has. Whether it's about HIV and AIDS, whether it's about malaria, it's about monkeypox or COVID-19. People are empowered when they get the correct information. They are able to make informed choices about their lives. REACH builds two-way digital communication to augment what the government's doing, to extend the health system, make it more efficient, to help people get the information and tools and services that they need in their hands to support them on their own health journey. We use really simple messaging systems like USSD and SMS, as well as WhatsApp. We will send you messages that will help you to stay healthy. So that might be that you need to take medication every day and we remind you to do that. Or it might mean that you need to go for a checkup because you're pregnant and we'll help you to do that. Leveraging platforms and applications that are already on the end user's phone has really helped smarter rollouts because then there's a bigger use of the tool. Digital health has previously always been used towards the latter end of the healthcare service value chain. So what that means is digital health and health technology was always used to help diagnose patients. But what you find then is you create a culture that only causes patients to present late when they're sick, a diagnostic culture. And we know now as we work towards universal health care, that preventative care is what's most important. And particularly with South Africa having a huge burden of non-communicable diseases like diabetes and hypertension, it's very valuable for users to then be able to adopt these tools in order to change their lifestyle towards wellness and well-being and not just disease management. When we first did one of our first maternal health messaging programs, we sent out messages to mothers and assumed that they would realize that essentially there was a computer behind the platform. And of course they didn't. They would talk back and ask questions, um, give us feedback that we'd never even asked for. And we suddenly realized the power of not just serving people with information, but being able to hear back from them. The platform is not face to face, however, you feel the intimacy is different. They can ask whatever and talk to us freely. I ask the questions and they answer me. When I'm feeling that there is something that is wrong with me, then I know that I'll get answers from Mom Connect. There are moms that are actually living very far from the clinic. What inspires me every day is waking up and just helping the moms on Mom Connect and have a good and healthy pregnancy journeys. So having this many people engaging at this really large scale suddenly opens up the opportunity for data to completely change the way that health systems react to the needs of their patients. We work with ministries and partners on the ground to support those ministries in 11 countries. We started working with the WHO who had never really thought about communicating directly to citizens, but COVID-19 changed how they thought about communicating. Through these platforms, we have reduced the number of infections and we have prevented people from dying. We need to stop thinking about patients as diseases. We have silos where organizations have decided to fund very specific disease areas. We have silos within departments of health where programs are split into these disease areas. 
What I'd really like to see in the future is that it does not matter if they're HIV positive, if they're a woman, if they're pregnant, if they're trying to quit smoking, people can be empowered to live healthy lives.